All right, welcome to DuckTales, where we pull back the curtain on DuckDuckGo to share stories, tech, and people building privacy tools for everyone. Today, my guest is Tim Ray Bold, who leads <laughs> AI development at DuckDuckGo. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, Camille Baz Baz. That's right. <laughs> Pretty good. Baz Baz. Um, so we're going to talk about a new feature that we just shipped on the old SERP at DuckDuckGo, uh, which is the more button on uh, assist. Can you briefly explain what the more button does mm -hmm. and why we decided to add it to the AI assist answers? Yep, sure. Um, well, search assist, first of all, is the AI generated answer that goes on the top of results for about a fifth of queries. That's whenever we think that the query is asking for information that can be answered concisely. Um, and then the main thing we pride ourselves on with assist is that it is just the answer to your question and nothing more. Um, it's unique in that way, I think, across the AI answers industry um, in that it, it really tries to get the job done in a very short amount of words. Um, but users for some queries were asking it to go deeper on topics. Um, and that's the answer to the to the more button question. So um, it's a pretty it's a pretty simple feature. Right below the concise answer is a, a button that says more, and you click it, and then it will go and expand its answer into more of a maybe like a traditional answer that you see in an AI chatbot that has tables and headings and it lays things out. Very cool. And so, what problem do you feel like users were experiencing that led to this feature? Um, yeah, it was really just a request to go deeper on some percentage of topics. Um, the short, concise answers are just what the doctor ordered for many, many of them. Um, but the click rate on the more button has been really good so far. It's about 10% of people are clicking that button. So um, on the, around that portion of queries, uh, the the topic they asked about is um, they just want a little more, a little more depth with the answer. So. What was the biggest technical challenge you had in implementing this expanded answer? Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't know how far back you want to pull the curtain. Um, your intro said full, you're full kimono, please. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, the SERP is written in largely written in Perl. Um, Perl has a. It is challenging to stream the response back in Perl. Hmm. Uh, so when you use an AI tool like Duck AI, our chatbot tool, um, the response will stream back, which means that every single chunk, set of words, that it doesn't wait till the end of its response to give it to you. It gives you the response as it's going. And it, it's a much faster experience for users because they can start to read it as the AI is generating word after mm. word after word. Sure. That's called streaming. Um, in Search Assist, we don't need to stream that concise response. We wait until it's done, we run some safety checks on it even, um, and then we p present the answer on the page. But with the more button, it would just be too long to wait to take mm. that same approach. So we needed to figure out streaming. Um, and you know, in, a, in some cases, that's not a hard technical problem at all. Um, in our particular environment and setup, that, that happened to be the hardest problem. Second hardest problem is you need to come up with a prompt that explains to the AI what type of response we're looking for. Um, and that is, you know, our initial prompt, as we've been saying, is very focused on being concise. But this one, we needed to figure out the right words to tell the AI to say what type of answer we want out of an expanded answer and how we want it to lay it out and talk to the user. Gotcha. Um, and so how are you, I mean, it sounds like in the development of this, you were trying to balance the speed and simplicity people expect from DuckDuckGo mm -hmm. with getting a more comprehensive answer mm -hmm. to their to their question. Yeah. Does that sound right? It does sound right, yeah. And I mean, it seems simple in retrospect that a simple button to click more was the answer, but we, we as we were building Search Assist, you know, we knew we wanted to give more in, in some cases to some answers. Um, and it was, you know, sort of a light, light bulb moment to just say, well, the first step we can take is just to ship the user a button and the user can decide when they want more. Um, so that took the burden off of us to figure out 
which answers exactly, or which queries exactly deserve to have more of an answer. And then from a speed standpoint, that sort of solves that problem too. Um, because once they're engaged and clicking more, they've presumably read the concise answer, that, and the new answer is going to stream back, so they're going to get to read something almost right away. Um, the speed piece there, we have a little bit more leeway to take a few seconds to, to, uh, to, to deliver the answer. Whereas the concise answer is coming along with the SERP, and people want a fast SERP, so can't delay that. What's been the feedback so far, and, and sort of what, what kind of data are we seeing? Mm -hmm. um, it was the number one feature request uh, before we built it. Um, um, and it has largely satisfied that request that, um, you know, people asking for it has died down as you would expect. Um, <laughs> and our overall, the, the main metric we use to track satisfaction, user satisfaction for this feature is the ratio of people clicking the thumbs up over the thumbs down. That's the bottom of each answer. It says, was this helpful with those two options? Um, so after we ship the more button, the overall thumbs up to thumbs down ratio increased um, mm. noticeably. So people seem to like it. And uh, if you're thinking about the differences between DuckDuckGo, what you would see on Google, and then if you are using ChatGPT or like a perplexity, now that DuckDuckGo has more and is easily connecting to Duck.ai, you know, how would you place our offerings in that context? Yeah. Um, well, when it comes specifically to these AI responses, um, I still think the main differentiator is that we play the 80-20 rule really well with the length of the answer at first. Um, in most cases, you know, giving the user the direct answer in a small in a, in a way that they don't have to spend a lot of time parsing or reading um, is the preferred, you know, experience. And we've heard users say that, specifically say that your answers are so much shorter. Um, I didn't even know I wanted that, but that makes a lot more sense in, in, in most in most queries. Um, and, um, you know, let, letting the user expand into this more button is the first step into some queries do deserve a richer, deeper answer. Um, it, it, they deserve, it deserves more work from the AI to be able to do for the user. Um, so this more button is the first step along that, that path. But, um, you know, I think there's, there's other tools that started there and they're coming yeah. back to what people want in a search engine, the core search engine experience. They're having to add on to the core AI experience. And we just started the other way around. We started with a great search engine. Um, that already gave a bunch of instant answers to that were not AI generated on, you know, stocks and sports and weather and things like that. Um, so this, uh, you know, our search assist tool fits right into the wider SERP experience for people. Fascinating. What do you, <laughs> how does this fit into, you know, the DuckDuckGo, you know, looking, looking to the future here, um, how do you see this evolving? What do you think is um, is next for these kinds of mm -hmm. for the for the search assist answer on DuckDuckGo? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think both both of our AI tools will evolve, um, and Duck AI will get more more and more ability to do things that search engines do. And a search engine will get more and more ability to lay out a search engine results page, a SERP, with the benefit of with the benefit of, of generated content from AI. Um, the difference right now is primarily the types of queries that people are bringing to these two tools. Whether or not people's behavior merges into one tool is anybody's guess. It's a very interesting question. But right now, on the search engine, most of the queries are four words or fewer. Um, you're not typing big long prompts or asking long complicated questions. Um, so the search assist lives on the SERP and is built for those types of queries more so. Whereas in duck.ai, we see 
we don't see <laughs> actually because we don't <laughs> see any of the prompts and that can be annoying from a building a product standpoint but um we know from other data sets and other tools and benchmarks that when people go to ai tools they they don't just type in four words they're they're being a little bit more conversational in the way that they prompt the the, the model um so that deserves a different um that yeah those queries are the user is asking something different so we're obviously we're going to be the answer is going to be uh differently natured um i one more thing on the future i i think yes um you so right now the search assist concise answer it, it goes to the model one time um one shot is the terminology in in uh, ai land um and we give it context from the web and it has all the information it needs to answer the question and it comes up with a concise answer but it has one shot to do that um and it's based and it's up to us to feed the L, the, the lm with the right context to answer the question um but sometimes you know you've seen these deep research tools around this probably um where you could imagine that some for some queries it might want to search twice not just once but twice so if I say, you know, who is older, person A or person B, it might do two searches, how old is person A and how old is person B, and then it has all the information it needs to answer your question because probably nowhere on the internet was it written, person A is older than person B. You just have right. to do two separate searches. Um, that's sort of the next step, but you could, you could imagine that going much more complicated into many, many searches, and maybe not just searches, but it could also... Um, use different tools other than search to gather information to answer the question. Um, so at some point, you know, it, uh, we are starting to do this on Duck AI, and it's also interesting to start to do this on Search Assist to let the model, if the user tells us that they want more, they're willing to wait in 10 seconds or even a minute for an answer, um, that we can use that time to have the LLM do a lot more things and do one thing sort of in a loop um, to answer the question. <clears throat> Got it. That's, that sounds fascinating. Yeah, people get better answers. Final question. What's one thing about building AI search features that might surprise people outside the industry? Um, hmm. A lot of our answers come from a cache. I think maybe that's surprising. Um, cache money. Cash money, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, with an E, I see. Cash with an E, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Wu Tang was right. The cash rules <laughs> in terms of AI. so in that in that context, you're not searching for a new answer. It's something someone's already yeah, searched. Something for. that someone already has searched for. Um, and what what we do to make this this experience quick um, is if someone is searching for something, even if they did not request a search assist answer. If we notice it's being searched multiple times, um, we will proactively generate an answer in the background so that the next person that comes along to search that will have an answer delivered instantaneously. Because um, when they come from the cache, from the database of existing answers, um, it's you know it's instant on page load. <coughs> um, I don't know. That surprised me how just how important the role of a, a database of already generated answers was. Um, that brings a lot of complications with storing those answers and invalidating them at the right time. Um, you know, information changes. Um, who is the current president or how old is this person? Like those answers are not good forever. They change. Um, so yep. there's those types of things, but I don't know. Maybe if I had more, a little more time, I can come up with a, a more surprising. Sure. sure. I won't surprise you next time. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Tim, for joining us. Mm -hmm. No problem. Have a ducky day. <laughs> you too. See you.